Before we left, we would have to do some maintenance and clean the air filters, as the dust has been getting into everything. Time to have a look around the country. We're off to Cameron's Corner, then out to Mount Wood to the Shearer's Quarters. Cameron's Corner is 120 kilometres west from Tipperborough, on a good gravel road in dry conditions. Now, Charles Sturt first walked past this spot in 1844. The corner is named after John Brewer Cameron from the New South Wales Lands Department. He spent over two years during 1880-82 marking the border between New South Wales and Queensland. He placed a wooden marker every mile 1.6 kilometres eastwards along the border. To finish the day off we would head back to Tipperborough then east to a station called Mount Wood where the National Parks have an old Shearer's Quarters set up for the tourists to see how it was. Go and open one of those doors, Jack. Make out you're dragging the sheep out. Make out the shearing him, that's it. Now point him towards the door. Turn around, you look towards the door. Oh, yeah. yeah, and turn around and push him out through the door. And go and get another one. Drag him out like you got him by the back legs. That's it. Start shearing him, that's it. Now push him out. That's it, Jack. The cane grass shed, constructed of local materials and typical of sheds erected by early settlers in this district. This shed houses items of machinery, pumps, pump jacks and early engines used in this district in that era. One more thing I wanted to show you on the way out was called a whim. Now this model is based on the measurements taken from the ruins of a whim at Coley Bore, drawn by camels or horses the whim was an efficient method of raising water from wells up to 300 feet deep. A full-size reconstructed whim is located at the Woolscour site at Mount Wood. The first time I saw the whim on my first trip to Tipperborough over 20 years ago, I thought it was for raising gravel up for the mines, but it was to raise water for the property and to keep the sheep in fresh water. As you can see, a poor old horse would be strapped into this harness and walk around here all day long. If two young children can push the whim this easy, the engineering of this era with limited resources was truly amazing. So a horse would have no troubles at all. Their will to survive and prosper was far stronger than we are today. Every item I looked at had a stamp on it from England. I was so fascinated how far it had all travelled and every man, woman and child that helped cart this equipment all the way up here. Now it all stands in the elements rusting away. One day this machinery will be a distant memory just like the people who travelled so far to get here.